Um, Ken Thompson, in his usual fashion, found the essence of that and made a smaller language called B. And then Dennis made this language called C. B was typeless because the machines that it was running on didn't had only basically one type, the integer this big. Um, and whereas the PDP-11 had characters and integers and an eventually floating point. So this was a very, very uh, effective language. And you could do anything with it, and it was efficient. And it was at a time when efficiency mattered because the machines were actually pretty wimpy. As Again, I don't have to tell people here, most machines didn't have very much horsepower. They didn't have much memory. They didn't run very fast. Um, so you needed a language which was a pretty good match for what machines looked like. So anyway, the advent of C led to just an explosion of uh, applications that you would call today system programming, and in particular things like language creation tools like Yak and Lex, um, and then the things that went with them. And then Steve Johnson had the idea that, gee, you know, you could sort of separate the input side of a compiler. I mean, it's probably not an original idea, but separate the input part of a compiler, the parsing and figuring out what the statements are, from the code generation part. And then you could have code generation for different kinds of machines. And there were a lot of them in those days. So Steve Johnson's portable C compiler led to the portability of lots of programs that ran on Unix and then eventually to the operating system itself. 